Hey guys, it's Linda Winter with a part two. I showed you in my last video my cool boxy knot bag template. And I showed you how to make this cool one here. This could be for boys. I've stuffed this full of some goodies of shark themed goggles and sunglasses and shark socks and even a shark candle if somebody's doing a shark themed birthday. But this is just a great little whatever to put whatever kind of goodies in there. So I showed you how to do that. I also talked about squaring it off. Really simple to do using the ruler, using this template and using any straight ruler to get the bottom straight. I also showed you how to use my round offs to be able to round off the corners and that would whip up the traditional knot bag. This is the boxy knot bag. But in this video, I want to show you how to do a fancier style with a grommet. The grommets that you would use for curtains. So these guys here, they come in all different sizes. This is a size that I like here. It's the standard one for curtains and I just think it dresses it up a little bit. So we're still going to use the template. I've made a paper template and I am going to have a template made that will go along with this. It's basically going to be this shape. I'll show you how to use this, but I'm going to um, have a template that will go along with this too. So if you want to make the grommets, it's going to make it a whole lot faster and easier. All right, let's get this out of the way. I've gone ahead and I've cut my lining out. I used SF 101 on the back of this. I'm going to use a skirt. Again, the idea of recycling, you've got clothing. This was a skirt that I found at a like a consignment shop or something and it's a heavier weight fabric so I don't need to put anything on here to be able to do this. This is going to be the outer fabric and this is going to be my lining cotton fabric with the SF 101. So I've gone ahead and I've cut this on the fold. I've got the fold right here because what we want to do with this where that grommet is, there's no side seam here. If you had a side seam, it would split down the middle and I just don't think it would look quite as nice. So we're gonna use the template with the fold. And you can see right here, I've got my skirt folded in half. I'm gonna place this along the edge and we wanna line that up right here on the fold. I've got the hem of my skirt here, so I'm gonna scoot that up a little bit more. And anytime you go shopping at garage sales or Goodwill or anything like that, go look at the larger sizes because it gives you more real estate. And usually they're the same price too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut here. I'm gonna turn my template. I'm gonna cut. And remember when we're working on this, inside of here is harder to cut with the rotary cutter. That's the 45 millimeter. Because this is dark, Using a pen on here isn't going to do me quite as much good. So when we get to that, I'm going to go ahead and just do with my 28 millimeter rotary cutter in there, but we'll go ahead and cut two. All right, so you can see I went this way. I need to turn my template this way so we can get right inside there. And sometimes you get all those threads and sometimes not. That's where scissors work really well. I'll use my rotary cutter. I mean, I'll use my scissors on that. And we're gonna cut this little bit down here. And then we're gonna go deal with that neck. All right, so we're gonna leave this here. Let me cut off excess, just so I don't have that bulk. All right, let's go look at the neck. Get those grommets out of the way. And I'm gonna go in and just trace right here. It's hard to see with the black and the navy, but we're gonna go ahead and try. That 28 millimeter rotary cutter does a much better job than the 45 millimeter, so I'm gonna grab it in just a minute. Let's see, not so bad. All right, let's see if we can get inside of here. Repositioning your template to be able to get in. Can you see how I'm a little bit further away from the template, but that at least lets me get rid of all of this excess. And then I can get in a little bit closer. All right. We don't want to change the angle of the rotary cutter, the 45 especially, too much because it's going to dig into our mat. You're pushing forward, you're not pushing down. That's where those scissors really work better for when you do this. But I wanted you to see what would happen when I use the 45 millimeter instead of the 28. All right, so I've got a little bit of excess fabric there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and say good enough. 
All right, so what we've got now is our fold. I've got a fold here and I've got a fold on my other fabric. All right, so I've got my template and instead of working on the darker, I'm gonna swap out to the lighter color. That way I can see what it is I'm doing and then I'm gonna use this one as my guide. And remember, I'm making a template that's basically this shape. Now when I did my little test, I, I left about a half of an inch, three eighths of an inch here at the edge. So the template will be a little bit bigger than this. What I wanna do here is basically just go in and I'm gonna be cutting along here. All right, so that piece here is gonna give me the curve that I need for my grommet. So you can use your rotary cutter, you can use your scissors. It's totally up to you. You just have to feel comfortable with whatever it is that you're doing. So I've cut that. As I said, we're gonna use this now as my guide for the lining. And you notice I've got Wrong sides facing, right sides facing. That way I know that everything's gonna be lining up okay. All right, line up those folds. And now we're gonna, with the rotary cutter, cut around here, or again, you can do with your scissors, totally up to you. And I am a little bit further out in front of me than I would like, so I really would have this right under my eyes, but I want you all to be able to see what I'm doing. And when you have the template there, then you won't be doing what I'm doing right now. You just cut along the edge of the template. So, and that template will be coming soon. So no worries. And that will be the grommet add on to the boxy knot bag. All right, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna do a similar style as what we did before, but it's a little more confusing because when I open this up, I've got a strap and I've got a strap, and what am I gonna do? How do I add those straps? Remember we sewed the straps together? So we had a seam here before. So what we're gonna do is we're still gonna sew the straps together, but I'm gonna ignore this for the moment. Okay, so we're gonna take a pin I'm gonna do this here. I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. And we're gonna, at the sewing machine, sew these straps here and sew those straps there. I'm gonna use white thread on this and then I think I'm gonna maybe swap out and do black thread in just a minute because the white and black certainly wouldn't look good together. All right. And we'll just leave the white thread in. You all know how much I don't like having threads that don't match, but we're gonna do that for the strap at least. All right, so next thing we want to do is look to see what it is that we have here. All right, I've got my strap. Remember what we would have had here was the strap and then the strap. When we open all of this up, we would have had the longer strap and the shorter strap. This is the longer strap that we have here. And this is in place of the shorter strap. So remember the next step that we did was we sewed the neck the opening. So we're going to do that still, but it's a little bit different because I've got this here that would be the strap. And that pin is like dull. All right, so we're going to pin just like we did before. I do have one seam that I can match up. Remember, that's where I started before was I matched that up. We would press those seams. I don't wanna spend all the time with all the instruction that we did on the last one because I want you to get the idea of how we do this. So if you haven't watched that first video, make sure you go watch the first video and do one of those first before you do this one. I just think it'll make more sense. This to me, even when I was coming up with this method, it was like, is this gonna work? I'm not sure it's gonna work and it worked. So do one first, the traditional, my traditional way with the shorter strap and the longer strap. 
And we're gonna do, again, it's kind of that pillowcase method of having everything tucked inside of that strap. So when we go to turn everything else out, I've got a finished edge and I don't have to tuck any of those sides in at the straps, fold them in, press them, top stitch, all of that stuff where it may not look quite as nice. All right, so we've got pinning, a little bit more pinning to do. And then we're basically going to be at the sewing machine Stitching. Now I am going to start right here and I am going to go in and trim off a little bit of that excess. And I would take the time to press this. Just trimming a little bit of this. But I really would press those seams open more likely than just trimming. Okay. At the sewing machine, we're going to start at the strap join. And again, a quarter inch seam allowance is what we want to use here, not a three eighths because this is a strap. And we're going to be pulling everything inside of this strap. We've eliminated some of the bulk because where we had the shorter strap, we've now got that little curved area where we're gonna add the grommet. And the grommet is gonna be one of the later things that we do. So if you haven't done a grommet before, you might wanna practice. There are some really cute grommet bags out there. So, you know, you may as well make a little tote or something if you wanna do that. And if you've got a table, make sure that none of this gets caught on that table because that would ruin your day real fast. Not ruin your day, but at least make you have to rip out some stitches. All right, so I'm at the curve. And we didn't do this in the first one. This is where we would have joined the shorter strap. And instead, we've got the little bit of a curved area for the grommet. And again, make sure that nothing is getting caught on that table itself or take the table off. And you can use pinking shears. You can clip if you want to. Totally up to you. We just want to make sure that we have everything clipped nicely. So when we do turn this right sides out, everything sits nice. All right, we're getting back to the beginning. And I'm just over stitching a little bit. Okay, we're going to snip and then I'll come back and show you the next step. All right, so I've gone ahead and snipped at the curves, but I decided to use my pinking shears right here at this little area here. All right, just like we did before, we turned everything right sides out. And we would, at the ironing board, give everything a really good press. I'm just with my fingers kind of opening up there. And we're finagling that a little bit. The stiletto works really well for this, too. And we're going to treat this as if this was that strap that was sewn together. So when we do our tucking like we did before, we've got that area to tuck. And remember how I pulled here? We'll press that again. We're going to go either lining out or outside out. It doesn't matter, but we're bringing wrong sides together because what we want to do is give that inset area a good press. This is definitely one that we need to top stitch on because the top stitching is going to make those grommets look a little more professional. So the last one I did, I didn't top stitch, but this one we definitely would want to top stitch. All right, and I've got the pink area up. All right, I'm going to give this a good press and then we'll come back and take a look at what this looks like after it's pressed and then the next step too. All right, so what we've got here is our 
strap that's been joined here. We've got our nice curve that's going to hold our grommet. And then we've got our box bottom. So if we look over here, instead of this strap, we're going to have the grommet here so that the grommet will be where this piece goes in. All right, so we still need to finish off this seam right here. So we're going to open this up just like we did before. And this is where it gets a little confusing because we only have the one strap. This was a strap before on the other method. So what do we want to do? We want to have all of this stuff right here tuck inside of here. So it's a little bit different, a little more difficult to do just because we've got all this bulk. So we're going to roll this up. I'm going to come over to here. And this piece and this piece, we're going to look right inside of here. Oh, and did you guys figure out what I forgot to do? I forgot to mark where we need to have those straps join. All right, so we're going to come back to here. We're going to grab our strap. And this is the one thing that I don't want you to forget to do. Because you can guesstimate, but it definitely will make a difference in how nicely things finish up. All right, so we're lining these edges up. I've got my fold. I've got my seam here. I'm going to do my straight edge here. And we're going to look to see. Basically, I'm looking at this lined up here. I'm looking at that pretty close to my seam there or to my marking there. And we're going to line this up looking at right about here. Okay, so right here is where I want to do my snips or my marks. So we'll get our scissors. And I'm just going to straighten this all out a little bit first before I do that. Let's get those straps nice and flat. All right, and again, I'm just going down about a half of an inch or so from this top that's there. All right, so let's find a marking that we can use. There we go. All right, right here. So I'm just going to pull it over to the edge and we'll just snip. And I don't want to go too far, so I'm going to go in and snip here. And I'm going to go to the next one, line that up, and snip. Remember, we're using a quarter inch seam allowance, so we don't have a whole lot of room for this. This is where if you wanted to not take a chance and just use a pen or a marker and mark those, then you can do that. All right, so what have I done? I've cut through my one, my lining, my lining, my outer. So my outer, my lining, my lining. Okay, now we're back to this. Okay, that would have been fun to try to figure out. All right, so facing up, the strap area here is where I want to be. Now, earlier when I did this, I was working on the darker fabric color. It doesn't matter. Whichever way you want to go, we're just rolling this, folding it, whatever it is that works for you, and get this inside of here. All right, so... Just finagle it a little bit. You can see. You just take your time till you feel like you've got it. All right, there's this piece here, this piece here. This needs to be tucked in. So you can see I'm going to do one bigger bunched up fold there. And we're going to grab this and grab this. And because I've got that little bit of a loop area there, it's more bulk in that one place. So I just want to make sure when I'm sewing that all of that is tucked inside. I'm going to put a pin this way. And then let's go back in. And if I need to redo that, remember I did it twice on the last video so you could see that process. If this doesn't make sense to you, go back and watch that other video. And again, I'm going to put a pin this way because I can feel inside of here all of that area. All right, we're going to keep going. And see that clip right there? That's where I need to be. So we've got that. Okay. 
And I'm a lefty, so that means I'm pinning in the wrong direction to be able to sew nicely. I tell you, the world is not set up for left-handers. Am I right? <laughs> okay, so this is right here where I'm going to start. I'm going to go over to this side, and then I'll come back and reposition those pins once I get everything inside of here. Also, because this was a skirt, and it's a heavier fabric, it's just thicker. So, but it still is going to work. I hope I didn't jinx myself there. All right, so we're going to put a pin here. We're going to keep going. And where is that clip? Way over here. Okay, you can see that clip here. So we'll keep going. This is the long side because the short side is going to be where we're going to put that grommet. All right, I'm going to go match up those marks that are here. Then I'm going to come back and reposition my pins and just make sure that everything is nice and tucked in. And I'm just pushing inside of there. And you'll finagle with this a little bit, but again, I think it's well worth it because your alternative is doing this where you've got to tuck those straps evenly inside of each other, line them up evenly, press evenly, top stitch evenly, all of that stuff. And I just don't want to fool with that. I think it takes longer. I don't think the quality is there. It just doesn't look as good. So I think this is such a, an easy method to do. So you guys let me know if you agree. I just think, again, it's, it's one of those, you know, if you've done a lot of the pillowcases, I go through spouts where I make a bunch of the pillowcases and then I don't make any. So it's one of those things you kind of have to get back into the, the rhythm of it. Like everything else, you kind of get into the rhythm. Okay, so I've added a bunch of pins because you can see how thick that is. It's a lot of bulk. All right, so at the sewing machine, I've changed out my thread to black. If you wanted to do black for the top stitching, for the top and pink for the bobbin, you could do that. I've just done black and black. All right, so I'm gonna put my needle down into that area. I'm gonna remove that pin and I'm pulling and making sure that there's nothing that's going to get stitched that shouldn't be stitched. Holding in place instead of back stitching, you guys decide what it is you like to do. And I'm just going to take my time and remove those pins as I go, but feeling that I don't have any of the fabric that I don't want in my stitches. And again, this is a similar method that I did to the little um, dress towel topper. And you can see how far away I am here from the edge. I'm too close to the edge here. So in a minute, I'm gonna go back and move my needle position. This is where that zipper foot really comes in handy too, but I am gonna go back and move the needle position and stitch some of this over again. I just want to get the pass, first pass done with those pins, and then we'll come back in. And you can see the further away I get from that middle, the more it's letting me stitch where I want to stitch. But all that bulk that was there, it was pushing my foot over. All right, we're getting close right to that edge. So I'm just holding that in place. All right, let's go back and I'm gonna move my needle position over. And right inside of here, see all that bulk that I have here? I'm just gonna kind of make sure that we're good. And right about here where that bulk just really got to be a lot, that's where I'm gonna start stitching. And I've got to move my needle back a little bit more. Okay. All 
right, and I think that's about where we want it to be. So good enough for that. All right, so just as we did in the last video, we're gonna trim off some of the excess here. Because when we go to turn this right sides out, we don't wanna have a lot of that excess. When we get close to the edge, we're not going to, or close to where we started, we're just gonna veer off a little bit. And there's really not a reason here to trim off the excess as much as right inside of here. Okay, so we're gonna pull. Reaching inside here, just taking our time and pulling. We don't have that strap like we had on the other side to pull. So we're gonna pull and pull and pull. All right, and now, see there's that piece that would have been the strap on the other one. All right. And this is where we'll take the time to go in and press everything nicely. We'll take a quick look at what we have here and then I'll press and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so this piece here would have been that next side where we would open it up and we would roll everything inside of here. We would have been doing this, you know, with the strap and the strap and rolling everything inside of here. We only had to do that method once because we've already sewn this piece here. So it's faster doing the straps, but it takes a little more time when we're doing this. But I think it's worth it. All right, so I'm gonna go off camera, do some pressing, then we'll come back and look at the next step. All right, so we've done a little bit of pressing. Next thing we want to do is top stitching. So we're going to top stitch basically around the opening. And the reason we need to do the top stitching is right here. This guy here, when we put the grommet here, it's going to look so much nicer with that top stitch. And let me pull this one over so you can see what I mean. Right here, can you see how I've got top stitching here? That just holds that nice in place and gives it a little bit more stability. So when we plop that in, that top stitching is done. I've got to top stitch now because once I put that grommet, I'm gonna have a harder time getting around there because that grommet's gonna be hitting my foot. All right, so if you wanna use your zipper foot, you can put your zipper foot on. That's what I'm gonna do. Again, an edge stitching foot, a top stitching foot, whatever it is that you like to be able to position to where we can get along the edge. And you decide where it is that you wanna be. I'm gonna start at the strap, join, and we're on the inside of this project. So you wanna get this laid out so that it's in the right position for you. All right, let me move my needle in the opposite direction. And we're right along the edge. And increase that stitch length. A 3.0, a 3.2, something like that. And again, this table, you may want to consider taking that off because that table loves to eat up your fabric and get caught. All right, so we're going to top stitch around the inside area here. Top stitch, edge stitch, whatever you want to call it. And again, with the original boxy, a knot bag. It didn't have to be top stitched, but I do recommend top stitching this because of that grommet. All right, so we've done the top stitching around the inside of our bag. And we're basically ready to do the finishing up. So same thing that we did before. We're gonna do lining to lining and our outer fabric to outer fabric. We need to tuck in the one strap. This is the only area where we have to worry about that. And we're gonna start at that center area. And we'll probably take some nips in that fabric there so we can have a nice join 
at those strap areas. And remember with the lining, we're going to be leaving this area open. So I'm going to put a pin down here. And then I'm going to put a pin going this way that lets me know this is where my lining is going to be. I only have the one side side seam that I need to do because remember this is where we folded it and that's where we have that grommet. We're going to do the box bottom basically the same as what we did before. And you can have the opening down at the bottom. I think just the side, you know, it doesn't show so much. All right, so we're going to look at that side area. And I can see right here my fabric is folding over a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and take a snip. And I actually have a stitch there that I'm going to cut. A couple stitches there. And I may not have to do a snip there with those stitches being cut. Let's see. And again, this is just going to give me that nicer finish on that strap. And this is the longer strap that's going to go inside the grommet area. All right. And I can see right there, this is going to be fine here. When I get to this area here, this area I'll probably take another snip out of the thread. Just picking out a couple of those stitches. That's where we did the sewing down of that. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing here and go this way. Now notice too that my pins are on the other side, but this side I I want a full with well we'll go on this side okay either side whichever side you think is going to give you a better kind of a control okay we're going to start stitching here right about here and then stitch all the way around and I'm going to take off my zipper foot and put it on my other it only takes two seconds it's one of those things that you know sometimes we just get where it, it doesn't take that long, but we get lazy and we just don't do it. And it's definitely worth doing. I've learned my lesson. And let me move my needle back to center. And I'm shortening my stitch length again. I was at about a 3.1. And so now I'm at a 2.6. And if you ever come over, you're going to find pins all over the floor. Because if you just saw that one going flying, that's what happens. All right, so when we get to right about here, I'm going to leave my needle down. I'm going to lift up my presser foot a little bit. I'm going to finagle that fabric. If you have that stiletto, that's a good time to bring it in and just hold those fabrics in place. It's only a couple stitches, so it doesn't matter that much. I'm going to go down to the bottom. We're going to switch over to the lining area. And I'm going to do the bottom. I'm going to unpin these and just kind of smooth out those edges to get those lined up. We're going to come over to this side and we're not sewing that much because this is the area where we're going to turn. All right, we'll do our mitered corners or our box corners like we did before. And then I'm going to turn everything out for you and show you how we're going to finish off with that grommet.
Now, I do want you to see right here, see how this doesn't line up and this doesn't line up? Because we have a seam here and we didn't have a seam here. You have a couple different ways that you can address it. You could go back and increase that seam allowance here if you want to, or you can just look at this area and this area and basically line them up to where they're about even. And then we're gonna stitch closer to this rather than here. So less than a quarter inch seam allowance here. All right, does that make sense? We don't have that side seam that matches up, so that means my box bottom isn't gonna match up. And we do want to back stitch here. There's not gonna be a ton of weight on here, but you never know. All right, bring that needle down. Make sure we plop that over. All right, we've done one corner there. We're gonna do the same thing. This one does have our seam allowance, so we're gonna line up those two seams because this was the longer side, so they do match up. Switching over to the lining. This is the folded side, so it's not going to match up again. So we're going to pull this taut. And I'm looking at this space and this space, and I basically want this would be in the center. And the way I know it's going to be in the center is I've basically got this amount and this amount here. And we're going to stitch close to the side that has the seam right here. So we're going to be stitching closer here. And you can see there, even with that pin there, how that changed this a little bit. So I'm going to pull a little bit more. And I'm going to put a pin over here first. This is the lining, so it's not like a huge deal, but still. All right, at the sewing machine. Right out of the way. All right, one more box corner to do, and then on to the grommets. We have both seams here, so this one should line up. Okay, now you could take the time to press the seams, to trim the seams, all of that good stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and stick my hand inside of here. There's my opening, and I'm going to pull. We're going to pull out the outside. We're going to pull out the lining. We're going to poke out those corners, and then we're going to attack that grommet and be done with this and show you how cute this bag can be with that grommet as part of your strap. Okay, so we're gonna pull and push. I'm just pushing out those corners. That's in my lining. I'm gonna reach inside here, do the same thing down here. And I've got lots of threads here, so you'll make sure that you cut all of those. Okay, we're gonna push inside. And I didn't talk about checking before for your lining to make sure everything fits nicely. If you need to do a wider seam allowance for your lining, you know, so that it fits in there nicely, then take the time to do that. I'm just going inside and kind of mushing those corners inside of each other. I'm going to flip that over and mush inside, and then we'll take a look at the inside to see what I mean. Okay. And you can see, I can do a little bit of pressing, and that will help this lining, but this is a time where I probably would go ahead and increase that bottom seam allowance, those side seam seam allowances. If this were a heavier weight fabric, for sure, I would increase uh, the seam allowances there. But because this, this had the SF-101 and this was a little bit heavier, 
you know, like a blue jean fabric, not quite as heavy, then that's one of those things that you can decide if you want to do that or not. All right, so we top stitched here. We would top stitch around here. Over here, you could do the side seam if you want inside at the sewing machine. You can do it with a hand needle. I'm not going to do it at the sewing machine. Why? Because I have black thread in here. But do you see how basically we're tucking that inside and just pulling tight? And you could do a nice blind hem or a whip stitch if you wanted to do that there. A ladder stitch would be really nice as well. So it's up to you. All right, I'm not trimming anything right now. I'm not going to do any more top stitching for the straps now because I would, but I want to show you how to do the grommet. So we would top stitch here. Over on this side, I am going to press a little bit. We have done the top stitching, so I don't have a whole lot that I need to do there. But I do want to just press all of this well, because that is where I'm going to be putting that grommet. All right, so what do we have? We've got this right here. We're going to put the grommet here, and that's going to be able to go inside. So I want to get all of this bag out of the way. And I'm looking to see right here, and you can see with my seven and my 10, I'm basically kind of using my mat as my guide. And I'm gonna to look to see right about there is where I want my grommet. This side over here, this amount over here, you decide if you want it up a little bit more. And even here, I think probably what I'll do with the template is make it a little bit narrower. Remember when I did this? I may make that a little bit narrow or even. So remember, this is going to turn into a no slip template with the no slip material on the back side. So still working on the details. So this little guy that we did here, I want to make it a little bit narrower so it's not quite as big there. All right, so when you buy a grommet kit, they give you this. You can use this to place right inside of here. If you trace inside of here, with this, it's not gonna be the same as the placement. And if you haven't worked with grommets before, let's take a look. This right here has a ring that sticks up. And it's more inside. This has these little notches that are there. And you can see how those stick up. So we need these two pieces. What we need to do is cut a hole that's not quite this big. So we're gonna use this guy here. I'm gonna flip over to the other side so you can see a little bit better. And we're going to place this here. And when we look to see, you know, if you want to fold in half. We're basically going to do a little mark. We're cutting this out. So that is not going to show. Can you see how I'm marking there? Okay, that is not going to show. So we can place this here. And when I look to see, I'm looking left and right. And again, I'm going to make the template a little bit smaller. Okay, we're going to go in and draw. And there are lots of ways to do grommets. It's really up to you how much time you want to spend on this. But basically, we've got that. I'm going to go at the sewing machine, and I'm going to stitch around there. Now, you guys know how much of a perfectionist I am. Not. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time trying to do this nicely. You can do a zigzag if you want to. I'm just basically going to be stitching because I'm going to be cutting out that center. And I don't care if I'm right on that line or not. I just don't want to be way outside of there. I want to be on the line or inside just a little bit. If you do free motion quilting, this would be a great time for you to do drop the feed dogs and just stitch around. All I'm doing here is just giving my fabric pieces something to hang on to when I go to cut this out. And if you want to stitch around a couple more times, you're welcome to do that. I'm just going to do once a little bit further just to get closer to that line. Okay. So again, not scientific, not perfect, but the idea is I just want to be able to have enough so when I go in and cut out that excess that my fabrics are lined up with each other. They're all holding together. So they're not flopping around. Okay, we're gonna go inside here. 
you're better to go smaller than you are bigger because I can always cut more out. And I'm going to make this too small so you can see what I mean. All we're doing right now is just cutting out that excess where the grommet is going to go. And then I want to show you how we place it. And grommets are really pretty easy to do. You could use glue if you wanted to, a fabric glue to hold this in place. It's totally up to you. All right, so this side that has the ring sticking up, I want to put this in here. And do you see how I can pull this and make it fit? But what happens when you pull and you force that in there, I'm going to get puckers in my fabric. So I said smaller is better because then you can always go in and trim out some of that excess. So that's what I'm going to do now. Just trim out some of the areas. And I'm not looking at my stitching as much as I am that drawn line that was there. Okay, all I'm doing is just snipping away a little bit more. And if you're going to do curtains, you know, where you're doing a whole bunch of these, then, you know, there are lots of faster, easier ways than what I'm doing here. But we're only talking about doing one. So this is not that big of a deal for me to do with that little bit of excess. Okay. All right. So I'm almost to the point where I'm going to try that grommet. Let's just get a little bit more of that excess fabric. Okay, so I'm going to place this in, and I'm going to grab, I'm just grabbing another pair of scissors, and do you see how basically I'm just pushing this down? And again, I've got a little bit more fabric here than I probably should, so let's go trim out a little bit more. I don't want puckers. I haven't ever gotten puckers, but... When I've watched the videos, people talk about those puckers, so we're going to do whatever to avoid it. It's almost there. And this is like watching paint dry, I guess. All right, so we're going to go back and position this again. And this is where if you had a third hand, it would be really nice. All right, and you can see I probably want to cut even a little bit more. Let's see if I can get that in. Yep. And just see how using scissors or tweezers or something just to hold that down. What I don't want to have is any of that fabric sticking up because when those grommets come together, I want a good seal. Once you press, you can't undo it easily. I mean, you probably could, but not easily for sure. Not to the point where it's fixable. Okay, so you can see I probably would cut off a little bit more excess there. I'm just going to get my sharper scissors and see if I can get this down underneath there. All right, I think we're almost there. Yeah, and I think if I were really doing this for real, I probably would trim off a little bit more. Okay, so we've got the ring grommet. I'm taking the other grommet with those little notches that are sticking up. You can feel it with your fingers. And I'm gonna line that one up and then you just press and you'll hear it snap. Okay, ready? Okay, I'm just making sure everything is nice and tight and good. All right, let's take a look. We haven't done a lot of pressing here, but you get the idea about the grommet bag. Okay, you've got threads to trim. 
you've got some pressing to do, you've got something to put in there, a nice little gift, whatever, but there is our grommet bag. Okay, so you can do the grommet bag here. Let's get this all laid out nicely. Get those corners basically like that. <laughs> there we go. All right, so there's our grommet bag. We've got our boxy bottom bag right here. And I've got the squared bag. And remember, you can do the rounded bag all with the boxy bottom, boxy knot bag. <laughs> so it does our boxed bottoms, knot bag. So the knot bag, again, cute, fun project, really easy. Once you start making these, do assembly line. And you can find this template, this guy. And coming soon, the template here that does the little grommet area here. We're basically looking at that piece here versus this piece here. So this is what we have here. You can't really turn it on the side because that is basically right over here. But that's what we're getting with the grommet. And I'll be making a template that will allow you to cut that area. And again, you can see I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so it's a little bit nicer here. So the other one that I did here, you can see there. Basically, that's what we're getting here. So that's what we've got. All right, so we've got this template, and then this will be an add-on template. So I'll probably have this as an option on the same uh, web uh, web page for, for the boxy knot bag and then it'll be the grommet template that will go along with that so you can find that on my website right now this is on the website this is not on the website you can see this was just a cutout that I did but that'll be a new template that's coming soon winter designs is my website so winterdesigns.com when you go to products and templates if you type in knot k-n-o-t you'll be able to find right now the boxy knot bag and then by the time that this video gets filmed you'll see the additional template that will go along with that so to be on the same page you'll be able to click on that and add that with this purchase if you've already purchased the boxy knot bag template then you can buy the additional template all by itself too. All right, guys, I think this is a really fun project. I think this is a great gift. I hope you all agree. This is gonna be a little bag, not this one with what's inside of here, but this with my stuff will be a bag that I'll be carrying. Same thing with this. I love these bags. I think they are a lot of fun. They will be great for assembly line. And remember, these are great also for all of the fat quarters that you have and for all of your scraps. You don't need much fabric at all. So I hope you love this as much as I do. Thanks for watching and please like, comment, share, all that good stuff. And I will see you next time. Thanks.